Hello and welcome to the 12th video of my Left 4 Dead 2 mapping tutorial series. Today we'll be going over how to create a functioning elevator. Luckily for us Left 4 Dead 2 mappers, we're privileged with an entity called Funk underscore elevator. It's an entity specifically designed to function as an elevator, and thus, looks less sketchy than other solutions in other source games. It's still a little finicky, so you need to make sure it's all set up properly. Let's get started with a really simple elevator. I have a bottom floor and a top floor I want to reach by elevator. Make a brush on the floor you want to start. Turn into a brush entity with Control plus T and change it from Funk Detail to Funk Elevator. Name it Elevator. Before we mess with the properties, we need to create another entity. Place down an info underscore elevator underscore floor entity. Move it inside the origin of the Funk Elevator. You can find the origin of it by seeing where the little X is in the center. When that's done, name the info elevator floor entity bottom. Next, copy it and use paste special, control plus shift plus V to paste it in the exact same spot. With the copy selected, move it up directly to the next floor. This is easier by increasing the grid size with the bracket keys and using the arrow keys to move it up. Remember, the funk elevator will move its origin to the origin of this info elevator floor entity. When all that's done, name the top floor entity top. Go back to the funk elevator's properties and look for the top and bottom floor position values. These use the Funk Elevator's origin by default, and because we're starting at the bottom, we don't need to edit the bottom floor position. For the top floor position value, edit the third number, around 20 more or less than what it currently is. In one of the side 2D viewports, you should see a white line sticking out with a white dot at the end of it. This is the top floor position anchor. We could just drag it to where we want the top floor position to be, which should be the origin of the upper info elevator floor entity. If your elevator starts at the top, all you do is follow the same steps except edit the bottom floor position. With all that done, let's change the speed of the elevator. 100 is default and it's way too fast, so I'll change it to 40. Lastly, all we need is a button to make the elevator move. Place a little brush on the elevator to act as a pedestal for the button. Next, make a funk underscore button entity. Name it elevator underscore button and set the delay before reset to negative one because we only need to use it once. Next in the outputs, make an output on pressed. Target the funk elevator via the input move to floor with a parameter of top. Top being the info elevator floor entity we made earlier. Let's try it out in game. We press the button and we're going up, but there's a big problem. The button didn't stay on the elevator. We can easily solve this by turning the pedestal into a funk underscore brush and parenting the funk brush and funk button to the elevator. Turn the pedestal into a funk brush entity. Under the parent property, click the eyedropper icon on the right and click on the funk elevator in the 3D view to quickly select it as the parent. By default, funk brush has no collisions, so change its solidity to always solid to retain the collisions. Parent the funk button to the elevator. Parenting means the object will follow its parent. This also means that the parented objects are referred to as children. Wrap your head around that. Let's compile and see it in game. Here's a slightly different scenario. Say you didn't want a boring brush based elevator, what if you wanted to use the elevator from hard rain? Well again, it's simple. You just use a prop dynamic with that model selected and parent it to the funk elevator. However, there's one thing you must consider. The funk elevator entity must not be concealed by the model. The funk elevator must be the thing that the survivors are standing on while they ride the elevator or else it'll break functionality and become very jittery. The simple way to go about using a model based elevator is simply to texture the funk elevator brush with no draw so you don't see it but it still must not be concealed or covered up by the props collision box. You can check if that's happening by pressing the CM button at the top of hammer, which gives outlines of the collision hole of every model. Otherwise, a model based elevator functions the exact same. You can also parent the hard rain elevator door model to the funk elevator and tell it to animate when you want to open and close the door. To lock the elevator so you can't press it until all survivors are inside, utilize a trigger underscore multiple entity. Make a brush textured with trigger covering the inside of the elevator and turn it into a trigger multiple entity. Next, change the entire team number to survivor. In the outputs of the trigger multiple, make a new output on entire team start touch. Target the elevator button via the input unlock. Make another output on end touch. Target the elevator button via the input lock. These two outputs will unlock when the survivors are all inside and will lock it again when a survivor leaves the elevator. Go to the flags of the elevator button and check starts locked. We should also show a hint when trying to press the elevator while locked. Place down an info underscore game underscore event underscore proxy entity. This entity produces hints that are predefined in the game files. In the last video, we went over custom hints, but sometimes these are preferred for their simplicity. Name it elevator underscore button locked hint. Under name of the event to generate, 
type in waiting underscore checkpoint underscore button underscore used. Lastly, go to the outputs of the elevator button and make a new output on use locked. Target the info game event proxy entity via the input generate game event. Let's check it all out in game. Now, finally, we just have to get it working with the nav mesh so the flow won't break and the bots know to get in. I just quickly generated a nav mesh for the small map. On the bottom floor, the nav mesh is all messy and even going through the walls of the elevator, delete all of it that it made. With the elevator being in this bottom floor position, we'll have to make a new nav area for it ourselves. Type in nav underscore snap underscore two underscore grid one into the console to turn on grid snapping. You must do this. Next, make sure the white cross is on the top of the funk underscore elevator entity and begin a new area with nav underscore begin underscore area. Drag it out to make a new area inside the elevator, ending with nav underscore end underscore area, and connect it with the rest of the map. Now let's press the elevator button and bring it to the top. When you're at the next position the elevator can be in, in my case the top, begin a new area with the exact same shape as the one we made previously. Grid snapping makes this much easier. Connect it to the rest of the map. Analyze the nav mesh with nav underscore analyze and save with nav underscore save when it's done. Testing it out shows the bots know to get into the elevator with us, and the flow isn't broken when we type in z underscore show underscore flow underscore delta 1. This concludes the 12th video of my Left 4 Dead 2 mapping tutorial series. Next video will be a mostly chill one, going over miscellaneous gameplay elements like explosive barrels and alarmed cars. Thank you for watching.